Hey everyone, welcome back. Today on In the Kitchen with Sandy, we are making some cabbage rolls. Cabbage rolls, cabbage rolls, cabbage rolls. I am super excited about this. I think I already have a cabbage roll recipe here on my channel, but um, just forget that one. Forget that one. You know, we all have um, we all have our little things that we make that we think is so super good till we taste somebody else's and then it's like, damn, that's pretty good. So my friend um, makes the best cabbage rolls. Hers are so much better than mine. And I called her yesterday and I said, hey girl, what you doing? You gotta tell me what your secret ingredient is to your cabbage rolls because I have really been craving them and she really does make the best. She adds to her ground beef. She uses um, equal parts of the Bob Evans um, breakfast sausage. I'm telling you, it is so off the chain. And I wanted to share this recipe with you just because it is so, so, so delicious. So good. Usually I make mine in um, my personal uh, turkey um, roasting pan. But today I think I'm going to make them in these. And um, I think it's going to be big enough. I hope it's going to be big enough. I'm thinking, I don't know. We'll see. I might end up having to drag that thing out of there and, and give it in a wash and using it. Like I said, I'm boiling two heads of cabbage today, so I'm making a ton of them. Um, I've already got some of my cabbage. Look at that. It's just falling off there while I'm just jabbering. I've already got um, some of my cabbage peeled off, the leaves peeled off. Now, some of these, once you get down to the smaller section of them, they get a little small, but that's all right. That can be the hubbies. That can be the hubbies. I'm with the big ones. But let me show you something. I've got my other cabbage up there in the, um, just kind of simmering away very um, slowly. I brought it up to a boil. But what I did is I took, just pretend, just pretend this is a big cabbage. I just took and took the core out of it. I put it in um, a nice um, big old pot of, of boiling water and then I turned it down and I got the little a lid on it, not off of it, and I'm just kind of letting it, you know, soften up a little bit. Now these leaves, once you get down here, like really down here, these leaves are like super duper small. So you really can't um, unless you want to make your little tiny baby ones, but uh, what I usually do when I get down this small is I usually just put this, let this cool, put it back in the refrigerator, and I usually throw some potatoes or something on it um, in a couple days, some, you know, cabbage, ham, and potatoes or something like that. First thing I'm going to do, obviously, is start chopping a whole lot of garlic. Ooh, that's a big one. I think two um, big cloves would be plenty because those suckers are huge. Look at that. You know what? I might end up just using one of those because that sucker is big. Look at that. Look how big that is. I think we'll just use one. What do you think? So I'm just going to toss everything into a nice big mixing bowl. I generally use um, garlic. I use some onion flakes. I don't, I don't put um, fresh onions in my cabbage rolls because, well... Mom never done it, so I just never done it. These are absolutely amazing. Some people put, um, you know, you can put different things in cabbage rolls. And a lot of people I see, I notice that they don't put sauerkraut in theirs, but you know what? I put sauerkraut in mine. Cabbage roll is just not a cabbage roll without sauerkraut. I don't think so anyway. All right, that's perfect. Into my bowl it goes. I gotta have plenty because um, I got quite a bit of meat that I'm gonna be using because like I said I'm making a whole lot of them. This is um, that's about one and a quarter pound of uh, ground chuck. I'm gonna add that in there as well. Ooh, look how fresh that looks. Go ahead and give this a quick mixing around with my hands just to see how much meat that I end up with because I'm probably I bought um, two of each. I want to make sure that I have plenty of meat to go in my filling or to go in my cabbage roll leaves. All right, so to this mixture, I'm going to add a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce.
That's quite a bit, isn't it? Some fresh ground pepper. This is a lot of meat, so we're going to season it well. Lots of fresh ground pepper. A little bit of hot sauce. Frank's hot sauce is my favorite. Love me some Frank's hot sauce. And it's not going to make them um, hot. It's just going to give them like that little wanginess flavor to it that, that I love. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Some minced onions. I like to use the minced onions um, opposed to um, regular onions or real onions. These are real, right? I think they just add so much flavor, so much flavor. I know, I also put rice in mine. Some people don't, some people do. But you know what, I, I grew up with rice in mine. Rice and um, sauerkraut is a must in my cabbage rolls, always a must. So we're gonna put about, you don't want it really inundated with um, rice, so we're just gonna use really basically about Maybe about three fourths a cup of rice. Funny. So I'm just gonna mix all this goodness together. I'm not gonna put any um, salt in it because you know a lot of the ingredients that we're working with today already have salt in them. So you, you really don't want to overdo it. Your tomato sauce has salt in it. Your sauerkraut is just nothing but salt. Make sure you go in with clean hands. Oh gosh. And you know, I've always said, one good way to tell if your meat is extremely seasoned is once you get it all incorporated really well, I just pick a big glob of it up. I know you're gonna think I'm crazy. You won't be the first person. And I just smell it. If it smells really well seasoned, then you know what? It probably is. So what I do is I just kind of start peeling the leaves away. You want to be um, very gentle with it. You want to make sure that you don't um, like overcook this because if you do, your leaves will be almost um, transparent looking and you don't really want that because they tear easy. Um, the, the first few leaves on the cabbage, you know, sometimes I just really don't use those because, you know, they cook up. They cook up because they're ultra, ultra thin. You can just kind of like blossom it out. Let it cool. Let it cool, guys, before you handle it. Now, let me show you a few of these leaves. These are absolutely beautiful and perfect to work with. Whew, that's hot. I mean, look how nice and big that is. And look at that. It's not um, overcooked as far as rolling up your cabbage. There is a spot here, a nice thick spot that we're going to kind of shave some of that off so to make it rolling um, a little bit easier because it's really hard to roll capture rolls when you got that big thick uh, part of the core rind whatever you want to call it look at that that's going to be a nice big cabbage roll this is the most time consuming part here honestly you take a nice little handful of meat Oh gosh, I'm going to have meat for days. Meat for days. Let's put a little bit more in there. Make them nice and fat. Just the way I like them. I'm going to turn it this way. Now. And then you just kind of start rolling it. That's all you do. You give it one roll. And then you bring your sides in there. And then you roll it again. Voila, a cabbage roll. Let's do another one. I like to start with um, the thicker part on my right hand side. I don't know, don't ask me why. That's just what I like to do. Not too much, not too much, but not too little. I was hoping to get some of these big cabbages from my uh, local farmer's market when I went there um, last week or a couple weeks ago, but they didn't have big ones. But sometimes, you know, it's not always true. Bigger is better. Look at that. And normally I secure mine with a toothpick, but I don't think that I'm going to today because these are rolling 
absolutely perfectly. These are just these are just rolling so good. So I don't think that I'm going to have to secure them with a toothpick today. I think I'll probably do it better this way because that way I can just line my whole pan with these beautiful cabbage rolls. Look at that. All right, I'm going to continue to roll these up and then we're going to top them with some sauerkraut and tomato sauce. All right, my cabbage rolls are all rolled up and they look absolutely amazing. Um, I got 26 rolls out of um, approximately four pounds of meat, two of the sausage and two of the um, ground beef. I got 26 rolls. Like I said, I didn't end up having to put any uh, toothpicks in them. They rolled up perfect and they're nice and sealed. Look at that. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So now all we're gonna do is top them off with a couple of my favorite things. I'm using a big old can of the Silver Fleece Sauerkraut. This is one of my favorite sauerkrauts to use. I like it and I just kinda put it right over the top. I use juice and all, guys, juice and all. That juice is gonna make for some amazing, amazing flavors throughout. Sometimes um, I'll, I'll put the sauerkraut actually in the cabbage roll. Sometimes, just depend on how I'm feeling. Today, I just wanted to do a simple rolled cabbage roll. You know what? I'm just going to put it all in there and just spread it around. I got my oven preheating um, to 350 degrees. Look at that. I like a little extra sauerkraut in mine, so... I'm going to open one more container, and these are the big ones, guys. These are the big ones. I like to pour the juice all over it. Like I said, some people um, don't put sauerkraut on their cabbage rolls. They just make their, you know, plain cabbage rolls, which I didn't grow up like that. I grew up eating cabbage rolls just loaded with sauerkraut with a big old can of tomato sauce. I might end up using um, two of these as well. Just pour it right on top. Maybe one and a half. I like them to have plenty of juice with them, don't you? Remember, if you buy a big old can um, like this and you decide not to use it all, what I usually do is um, I put it right in the freezer, not the can. I put it in like a little Ziploc bag and put it right in the freezer. I think that's going to be plenty. If I need to add any more, I will. Look at that. Look at that. And then all I do is I cover these with foil tightly. See all the juice down in there. All right, and these are going to go in my oven, 350 degrees, and we're going to cook these about probably close to two hours. I like my cabbage to be nice and soft. I don't like to take a bite of no hard cabbage. I'm not a hard cabbage type girl. So I'm going to cook them low and slow for a couple hours, and they're going to be absolutely amazing. I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Let me tell you something. It is the next day. My kids come over, had dinner with us. I made mashed potatoes to go with these beautiful, delicious, mouth-watering cabbage rolls. And they were, you hear those roosters? They were absolutely off the chain. I am telling you what, if you have not 
discovered that one secret ingredient that makes your cabbage rolls just, just number one, I have. My friend did, so I had to share it with you guys because, you know, what's with those roosters? That's crazy. And it's the middle of the day. I want you to look at these. Look at these. Look at that. Absolutely amazing and all the juice that's left with it. I think, I don't remember how many I rolled up. I think I may have rolled up about 26 cabbage rolls. I'm sorry guys. That's what happens when you live out in the country. I hear that 24-7, but I love it. I rolled up 26 cabbage rolls and I think I have um, maybe about six left. So... I'm just so glad that I got to do this ending for you because I'd have been so upset if I went through all that work and didn't do get to do the ending. I gotta have a bite. I gotta have another bite. I had several bites yesterday. I ate two of them yesterday with some mashed potatoes, and mashed potatoes to me is a go-to for cabbage rolls. If you make cabbage rolls, you have to make mashed potatoes. That's that is the, the one thing that goes with them perfectly, perfectly, and that's all you need. I hate even some up. Mmm. Man, let me tell you. Those are so. Oh my gosh. Those are so full of flavor. So lip smacking good. So amazing. I'm going in for another bite. I'm going in. I'm going in for another bite. Mmm. Mmm. Let me tell you, don't be afraid to use a little bit of hot sauce. I don't like I did. It doesn't add any heat to it at all. It just adds, sometimes when you add a little bit of hot sauce to bigger dishes or whatever, it adds just a little bit of extra, I don't know, mouth tucker and zing to it, if you will. I certainly will. I hope you give this recipe a try. They are so easy to make. Don't be intimidated by them. Yeah, a little time consuming. But, you know, if you want to get ahead of the game, get your cabbage ready the day before. And, uh, you know, cut your time in half. It really does. I hope you like this recipe. I hope you give it a try soon. You know I love you guys so very much. You know I do. And I'll see you on the next episode of In the Kitchen with Stacey. Bye. Take care.